What's up you guys, it's the BA. Today I'm going to be talking about why so many students drop out or fail out of STEM degrees. For those of you who don't know, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics. At first glance, the simple conclusion is that STEM degrees are difficult. This is a partially correct conclusion. Saying that they're difficult brings forth the question, why are they difficult? Or what makes them difficult? And I think the cause of this is the problem of cumulative knowledge. An old work colleague of mine once told me that when he was in university, he lived by the motto, 51% is 1% too much. And this very notion is the reason that many students drop out or fail out of STEM degrees. Relevant modules or subjects that you take when pursuing STEM degrees are largely based on cumulative knowledge. What this means is that what you learn today is relevant for you to understand what you learn tomorrow, which is relevant to help you understand what you learn next week, which is relevant for next month, next semester, and finally, next year. It's like a staircase. You need one step to make it easier for you to reach the next. And all these steps depend on each other to be functional. And this is where many students fall short. The notion that getting 50% is good enough is a lie. 50% will get you a pass, but it's not sustainable to easily secure you the degree. I'm going to use three students in an example about floors in a building. Student 1 will be the perfect student, and student 2 and 3 will be the students who will most likely drop out or fail out. Let's say each chapter in a module is equivalent to a building block, and say there are 10 chapters for each module per semester, which means there are 10 building blocks needed per module to make it to the next floor. So as a student, whenever you properly master a chapter, you'll earn a building block. And if you have enough building blocks, you can make it to the new level and you'll be allowed to continue getting more building blocks. If student 2 only understands 50% from the whole semester, that means they only have 5 building blocks. Semester 2 will start at the 11th building block and student 2 will now have to jump from the 5th building block all the way to the level for semester 2 in order for them to have a chance at continuing with the rest of the class and seemingly be at par with student 1. This is where students fall short, because after making it into the next semester with a 50%, they think they can move on like they're not 5 chapters behind. At the beginning of semester 2, student 2 will only have 5 building blocks. And by the time semester 2 needs them to have 16 or 17 blocks, that's when student 2 starts to crumble because they still don't know how to build block number 11 while still being on block 5. This is where you'll notice that some students begin dropping out, but many try to persevere and stay on until the end of the semester, but it's futile because they still only have 5 building blocks and now they're at the end of year 1 and the course requires them to have 20 building blocks and student 2 is still stuck at 5 and so they just fail. Many students drop out after failing and what this means is that an understanding of half of the concepts in a semester makes it extremely difficult to understand future concepts that rely on 100% understanding of the previous concepts. Now there are students who realize early on in semester 2 that they need the other chapters in order to make it in semester 2. This is student number 3. And so when semester 2 starts, student 3 will then start the process of catching up from all that they've missed in semester 1. And they start building block 6 to 10, while the class is learning blocks 11 to 15. This means that they are now constantly behind and are very likely to once again get a 50% in semester 2. And second year will start at the level of block 21, with student 3 still being at block 15. And so now they're caught in a loop of constantly being forced to catch up and are likely to keep passing by the skin of their teeth. 
The stress of working so hard only to barely make it causes a lot of students to just give up. Because if student three has one bad week, this could put them a chapter behind and that's 10% gone, which means they've failed. So the need to constantly be turned on and constantly be working is what usually leads to student three breaking down and dropping out even before they fail. It's just too much stress with little reward. This whole example is based off the idea that when students get through a chapter, they thoroughly understand it, which is also false. This is why student one will most likely not get 100% even though they're keeping up with the course perfectly. What this means is that there are some students who fall under student two or student three, but don't get 50% because the 50% that they covered was not understood perfectly, which led to them failing early on or giving up and dropping out much earlier than expected. The concepts covered in STEM degrees are not overly difficult. They just require you to keep up with the curriculum and make sure you understand throughout. The difficulty comes when you get left behind and you're looking at things that don't make sense and you assume that they don't make sense because they are difficult, which is untrue. They just don't make sense because you are not at the level of understanding them yet. My advice to STEM students is to be like student one. From day one of first year, you must hit the ground running. Keep up with the curriculum and aim for 100%. It's highly unlikely that you'll get it because there's gonna be chapters you leave behind and concepts that you don't fully grasp and general mistakes are gonna happen but that will leave you at about 70%, which I think is good enough to keep you going and will not leave you overly confused throughout the years. That's my take on why STEM degrees have such a high dropout and failout rate. Share your opinions based off your personal experiences. Do check out my other videos and as always, Mischief Manage.